in the introduction to astronomy video we talked about how observing the light sent from distant objects is one of the ways that scientists actually study astrophysical objects like distant stars and distant galaxies but in order to understand what light tells us about distant objects we need to know a little bit of the the main properties of light and there could be many many videos made on this I'm gonna to try to keep it brief and just to the points that will be relevant for how we study these uh, these astrophysical objects so you may have heard that light has this seemingly strange property that it acts both as a particle and as a wave. Sometimes it looks more like a particle, sometimes it looks more like a wave. And this seems like a very strange thing, but in truth, this actually occurs for all matter, including things that we would usually definitely call particles, like electrons and protons and even larger molecules that we would normally call particles. If you look on a small enough quantum scale, they sometimes behave like waves. So this isn't just unique to light. And if we, uh, if we go through a quantum mechanics video, uh, we'll, we'll go into a lot more detail on that. But let's just look at what properties of a wave it has and what properties of a particle it has that will be relevant to, to astronomy. So let's say I have, I have some wave. So let's say this is my, uh, my position and at different points along here, I have some wave. Now there are a couple of key properties to this wave that we're going to want to know. One might be the distance between the crests of these waves or, or the distance between a trough or how, the distance that it takes to go through one, for the waves to go through one complete cycle. And this is referred to as the wavelength and we measure that in meters. Another thing that we might wanna know is let's say I'm sitting at, uh, at a particular point, let's say right over here and this wave maybe moving towards me. And I may want to know how often am I going to see specific wave crests? In one second, how many of these wave crests am I going to see coming towards me? And that quantity is referred to as the frequency of the light. And that's going to usually be measured in, in a unit called Hertz, which is just equal to one over seconds. So how many uh, wave crests do I see per second? So we get that one over second. So these two quantities are, are very fundamental for any wave. And we can relate these two quantities by the velocity of the wave. So the velocity of our wave is equal to the wavelength of the wave times the frequency. And wavelength is in meters, frequency is in one over seconds. So the units you get for this is meters per second. So it acts like a velocity. Now the interesting thing for light is that light always travels at approximately three times 10 to the eight meters per second. That is 300 million meters in every second, which is a phenomenally fast speed and is actually, according to Einstein, the maximum speed that anything can move at without weird effects happening. And this speed of light, anyone who's, uh, anyone who's moving will agree on this speed of light. Even if you're going at millions of meters per second, if you look at the same beam of light, you'll say that it's going at this same speed, which is a, a strange effect and is very important for, for special relativity. So if you want to learn more about the consequences of this maximum speed limit for the universe, then I, I recommend looking at the special relativity videos. But right now we'll just say that the speed of the light travels at this speed. So we have our wavelength and our frequency and these wavelengths, these different wavelengths and different frequencies will correspond to, for visible light, the color of the light that we see. So for this figure, we see the wavelength in nanometers where one nanometer is one billionth of a meter. So for short wavelengths, we have blue light. And as we go to longer and longer wavelengths, we see greens and yellows and eventually reds. And that's the end of what we can see in the spectrum. But the spectrum goes on extremely far in both directions. At longer wavelengths and shorter frequencies, 
we get into infrared waves and microwave uh, radiation and, and radio waves. And if we decrease the wavelength, if we have a shorter wavelength and a higher frequency, we get into ultraviolet light, x-rays, and eventually gamma rays as the highest uh, frequency waves. So, and, and these waves have a lot of properties of other waves that they can interact and interfere with each other and you get uh, other phenomenon like diffraction and, and interference phenomenon that we could go on for many videos about, but again, we're trying to keep it brief. But there are some properties of waves that light doesn't match up with. Usually when you think of sound waves or water waves or, or shock waves or something like that, the wave needs some medium to go through. Uh, sound waves travel through the air. If you don't have air, you can't have the wave. Uh, water waves clearly near, need water for them to actually exist. But light doesn't need any medium to, to travel through. So, so for the wave, the things that are wrong with it is they, they have no medium. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, people, scientists were trying to find some medium that light was traveling through, and they called it the ether, but they could never find it and, and found no evidence that this actually existed. And also, we can, if we're thinking of waves, we can think of any infinitesimally small part of this wave. We can divide it as many times as we want and get a ti that's as tiny a wave as you could ever want, as small an energy as you can actually want. And this isn't true for light. And this leads us to our, our particle notion of light, where light is actually made up of photons. And instead of being one continuous beam, the light is actually made up of a countable number of individual particles. If I take a, if I take a, a, photon, a photo detector and put it in front of some light source, uh, some very weak light source, I will see a... a uh, blip 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 start to appear on my on my detector which counts the individual photons that are hitting it so in this way we see light is acting like a particle and the interesting thing for light is that the energy in the light is not based on the amplitude of the wave which we would get if we thought of sound waves or water waves but the energy in each photon is dependent on the frequency and we get that the equation for that that we have is the energy of the photon is equal to h which is something called Planck's constant times the frequency and Planck's constant h is equal to six about 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 and the units are joules times seconds so joules is a, is a unit of energy, and we have joules times seconds. So if I multiply it by a frequency, which is one over seconds, seconds cancel out, and you get an energy out of that. So the, at different frequencies, all of the photons that make up these different uh, kinds of light are going to have different amounts of energy. So one of the interesting things that we see uh, with normal light is if I have a single beam of white light I can send it through a prism and again we have a, a refraction things that happen to the light but basically what I want to get at is we can break up this light into individual parts into individual colors so if I have some beam of light if I'm looking at uh, this this trail of photons that is making up my light, these don't all have to be at the same frequency. In a single beam of light, I could have some, some uh, uh, green light in there, I could, have some, I could have some red light in there, I could have some blue light, and I could have light at anywhere on this entire spectrum from a single beam of light. And when it interacts with matter, when this light meets matter, it's going to interact with it differently based on what color light it is. Here we see that the beam of light uh, just moving through space is, is all just white light, it all stays together, but as soon as it hits this material, the, the blue and purple light is going to bend the most, so this blue light is going to bend more, 
and the red light is going to bend a little less. So it spreads out this light. And in a sunset, we can see this happen. The light from the sun, as it hits the upper atmosphere, uh, it is affected in different ways based on the, on the wavelength of the light that's going through it. And we, and we see the colors of a sunset. So we see that a single beam of light can be made up of all sorts of different colors of light. So instead of looking at just an individual beam of light uh, coming from a distant object, we want to break up that light and see all of the individual parts of the spectrum that come from it. So if we look at the sun, uh, we can look at the solar spectrum. And so, so this is our solar spectrum right here. We've broken up the light. And this is just a graph of the intensity of light, the intensity of a light at a specific color, or you could say a specific wavelength. And we notice that it's not all the same amount of light in each part of the spectrum in each, at each color. So for example, we see this overall shape to the light, but there are these little uh, spikes kind of uh, going down in this spectrum. And we see that if we look at one of these spikes, then if we, we can match it to our spectrum and we see these little dark lines where light seems to be, some colors of light seem to be missing a little bit. And this, uh, just to kind of show my hand for what we're going to be talking about in the next couple of videos, this essentially acts like a fingerprint that we can use for this light to study a whole bunch of different effects. These, each of these little dips in this light are going to tell us a huge amount of information about the source of this light. And we'll see how, how these uh, different spikes in this spectrum are made and what they can tell us about our distant source in the next video.